This is Dr. David Shine, and welcome to Business Law 101. Uh, moving into the very modern era, how did we get here? Why do we have this course tonight? Why do we have 6307 tomorrow night? Is the development of teaching business ethics began in the 1970s with Catholic schools of business like the one you were in tonight, the University of St. Thomas. Uh, I don't know the University of St. Thomas was pioneering it, but I can tell you that um, uh, Georgetown University, other well-known Catholic universities in their business schools began to say, you know what? We need to start facing the fact that businesses need to operate in a more ethical manner. And uh, what's interesting to me is I, I most of you can guess my age, but I got my MBA in the mid 1970s and there was zero, zero discussion of business ethics. Never came up. The only responsibility of business, and of course, there's a famous uh, essay by Milton Friedman of the Chicago Economic School, famed uh, Nobel Prize winner in economics. Uh, Milton Friedman's quoted in the New York Times as saying, the only responsibility of business is to make profit. Now, he, he explained that later to say, Look, if you make a profit, you can go and give some of the money to charity, <clears throat> but you need to make a profit first. And wouldn't it be better to give that money to the shareholders and let the shareholders pick the charities that they want to sponsor? So it's, it, you, you have to look a little bit deeper than just saying, oh, we're all about making money. But in any event, uh, when I was in an MBA program, the, uh, the, the whole focus was shareholder, shareholder, shareholder. What's funny to me today, and um, share this with you, is Ed Freeman, who wrote the famed book on stakeholders and how we need to focus on stakeholders. He went to Virginia from Wharton because Virginia got a uh, the University of Virginia Darden School got a fifty million dollar grant to set up a school a a, a independent ethics program within the, the Darden School. So it went from zero to 60, as the cliche goes, because of, uh, you know, uh, the interest in development in business ethics. And then um, we we had a period where it looked like we were more concerned about things, but there's a lot of debate about it, was uh, something called relativism, which is, I define for myself what's ethical. And there's still some concern about that today, but I think we're, we're developing a more balanced approach among the generations as to what we uh, regard as, uh, as, as the, the right way to do things, if you will, if, if we can use the term right. Uh, but uh, another big jolt to ethical analysis and which helped to shape how we teach business ethics today uh, came in 2001. And we, mo all of you, I think, are familiar with these. Obviously, we're going to cover some of them specifically as weekly cases. But uh, Enron shook Wall Street and industry to its core. Uh, and um, I, like I said, Enron was just amazing in terms of its, it, its impact. There was one company. And it wasn't, the, it was the largest bankruptcy that week. But then a few months later, and I don't have it in the slide, WorldCom went, went bankrupt. And then there were huge scandals with Tyco, Adelphia Cable, which was in Pennsylvania. Um, Arthur Anderson went down the, the chute with Enron. And that's 2001, 2002. They passed the Sarbanes-Oxley bill, which, by the way, is a separate lecture that we'll be doing. I have I've written a set of slides on Sarbanes-Oxley, which the acronym is oftentimes SOX, S-O-X, or SARBOX, S-A-R-B-O-X. So just so you're aware of what the, the popular acronyms are for that. But Sar Sarbanes-Oxley was passed in 2002. And whoops. And uh, it it really didn't fix things because we then had the Madoff scandal, <clears throat> which was a you know probably the largest Ponzi scheme of all time. And immediately behind Madoff was the Sanford uh, bankruptcy, um, 
an exposure of a Ponzi scheme here in Texas, which was um, about, if I, I, I'm not sure the exact number offhand, but it's around $15 billion. The Madoff scandal could be as much as $67 billion. And even though that's 08, 09, believe it or not, I saw in the news recently that they are still sorting out the Madoff estate. All this, you know, 15 years later, we're still sorting it out. And there's people that are still in line to recover from assets that are being searched and so forth. So it, it, it really, these are really significant events, folks. This is Dr. David D. Shine for Business Law 101. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite platform.